This is the best way to play Moira in Overwatch 2. DPS Moira is a legitimate playstyle if done correctly, since your playstyle heavily depends on the type of composition you're up against and the one that you're playing. If your team doesn't require much healing and you see an isolated squishy who you could pounce on, that is where you can utilise the mobility in your fade as well as your own sustain to go full on DPS Moira. Alternatively, if your composition is suited for it and it isn't an opportunity to 1v1, leverage the insane amount of AoE healing you can do. Moira's primary fire, the suck and piss. Mix Moira either beam enemies for 50 DPS in a 20 meter range, which also self heals, dealing 70 HPS in a 15 meter range, also applying a lingering healing effect afterwards. Starting off with a little bit of tech you can do on Moira to regen your heal bar faster. Simply just tap your beam on a target on and off really quickly, and you'll charge your bar faster. In terms of your actual usage between damaging or healing, it does link in quite a bit with the playstyle that you choose to adopt. But generally speaking, if your tanks are full HP, you can then look for opportunities to dual DPS and enemy supports. For example, on Icon Ward First Point Defense, if your tank is full HP and a DPS like an Ash or a Hanzo decide to coach gun or wall climb up, you can realistically take them by either fading up to the high ground and dueling them, or by tossing a damage orb their way and beaming them from low grounds. If you do decide to fade up, just make sure you're able to drop or back off if need be. A massive thing you need to nail down with Moira is your spray usage and resource management. Hold down the spray if your team really need the healing and try not to waste half your bar healing a small hitbox DPS flying through the air like a Genji or an Echo. Tap your spray when you need to and remember that it's a projectile meaning you need to lead your spray roughly in front of where you think your teammate is going to be strafing. The last thing that should be happening on Moira is you entering a fight with half a bar full of resource. The penultimate note I have is awareness. If you're healing a tank at critical HP but there's a DPS to your right who needs healing, don't ignore them. At the very least, tap your spray at them and quickly return to healing your tank if they're still under pressure. Lastly, note that your sock is actually a great deterrent against flankers. And one thing I'll add is Sombra can hack, and Lucio can maybe mark the Sombra, but Moira, going into Moira, Moira can right click and just quickly stop that hack and that's really useful. You can utilize the 20 meter range to annoy and deter flankers like Genji, Sombra or Tracer when you need to. Just don't solely focus on doing this since your team might need the healing. Before I move on, I thought it would be a good time to mention that if you want coaching from yours truly, join the discord down below and you can check out my rates. Moira's first ability, the spooky step, increases Moira's movement speed for 0.8 seconds whilst cleansing all status effects and granting invulnerability. First off, really basic but just kinda needs to be said, jump at the end of your fade to conserve momentum. Now with actually using Moira's fade, my number one piece of advice is actually knowing when to not use it. Fade most of the time should be used as a defensive failsafe to escape danger when you're feeling the heat. And of course, there will be times to use fade for an aggressive play, but there are times where you just fade for no reason, you fade after tanking a Reinhardt Fire Strike, an Ash Dynamite, or some random spam damage that you really did not need to take in the first place. Think of fade like a get out of jail free card that you can use aggressively on occasion. Speaking of those aggressive use cases, this will likely be when you see an opportunity to pounce on an isolated squishy. I actually recommend walking up to that squishy instead of fading to them, since then you're left without an escape button, but if someone's on high ground and you can reach them with your fade, because your hero is a really strong duelist, you can realistically take them. For example, if you're coming back from spawn on Rook City 6 second point defense, if there's a DPS holding high ground, you could fade jump onto that high ground, throw a damage orb, and if you get low, then just drop off the high ground whenever. You might be thinking, well, what if my tank doesn't get any healing? And my answer to that is, your damage is your healing. If a pocket Ash is busy shooting you because you're damaging her, she isn't shooting your Reinhardt, meaning that you're actually technically indirectly healing him. Moira's second ability, the skill orb, makes Moira throw a biotic orb dealing 200 damage or 300 healing, lasting 7 seconds on an 8 second cooldown. The radiuses are quite small, and the damage and healing per second numbers are basically the same as a biotic grasp. Three quick things before moving on to the orb. Firstly, you can cancel the orb with fade, which is super useful if you're low HP in order to squeeze out some extra value. Secondly, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but please try and use orb before coalescence. And thirdly, with both your heal and damage orbs, look to bounce your orbs downwards towards the target's feet to deal a smidge more healing or damage. You can see this with the footage in the background, where I did roughly 10 or 15 extra damage because the orb travels a longer distance if you aim it downwards. 
the biggest qualm with your orb is actually not which orb you should use, but when you should use it. Most obviously, look to toss out your damage orbs in between fights, since when the fight actually begins, your orb will be off cooldown. 3 or 4 years ago, I actually made a video back when I was 15, going through some set damage orb spots where you can bounce your orb off walls, hitting the enemy team from spawn whilst you're in relative safety. In terms of the actual fight, you want to use your orbs with purpose, meaning you want to time it with your team's aggression if you're damage orbing, or you want to time it with the enemy team's aggression if you're heal orbing. Don't just randomly spam it down chokes and then be surprised when you don't have damage orb, but when you actually see an opening. Yeah, but yeah, now so that Ash takes lazy. Up, uh, so lazy, so lazy. Look, look at this. Oh my days. Just walk <laughs> over here and damage ward this. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Go out there. Like, look right now. Don't you Don't you wish you had damage ward right now? You could legitimately try and yeah. 2v1 these guys. I'm not even joking. You have fade, you have damage ward, go 2v1 them. Now, when you're dueling, what orb do you use? Well, honestly, it depends on the matchup. I think in most cases, if you're fighting someone alone, damage orb is the better call. But if you're dueling someone who's pocketed, I think you should either damage orb and focus their mercy, especially considering the recent GA nerf, or you heal orb for more sustain and just buy time. Keep in mind that if you're in a 1v2, the rest of your team are in a 4v3, so if you can waste as much time as possible in that 1v2, I think it's actually worth heal orbing to keep that trade going. With your heal orb, you'll likely be using this when your team are rushing in, or your team are being rushed on. This is what spawned the Lucian Moira Winston dive comp back in Overwatch 1, because Moiras would stack their heal orb and their spray to make everyone unkillable for a few seconds. Lastly, something niche but might be useful, look to bounce the heal orb vertically in enclosed spaces like in Kings or Hotel, the place with the Mega, and just in small enclosed rooms in general to maximise the orb itself instead of it bouncing away from you. It can be super useful when dueling. Moira's ultimate, lazy game design, is yet another ability that only heals the damages. This time, it's a 30 meter beam dealing 70 DPS and 140 HPS. Your movement speed is also increased by 50% alongside a juicy self heal and this also lasts 8 seconds. Just like with Mercy's Valkyrie, you're not going to kill 5 with Coalescence in a split second. Instead, you use it to change the tempo of the fight, either to increase it by giving your team a resource advantage or to slow it down if you're down a player or two. This can help buy time to give your teammate time to come back or to give one of your teammates time to make a big play. More simply, you can think of it like an aggressive or defensive coalescence. An example of the former would be taking a wide angle like this on King Zhou, damage orbing and heavily pressuring enemy squishies whilst your frontline pushes in hard. An example of a defensive coalescence would be heal orbing your Reinhardt and then using coalescence when he's low HP and getting walked over by a nano boosted Reinhardt with speed boost. I personally like to think of this as like a Walmart transcendence. In terms of the timing of your coalescence, look to use it in the mid fights. This is because there'll be less cooldowns like Sleep Dart, Nade, Zara Bubbles and much more that could either outright stop your coalescence or heavily limit the value that you could get from it. Enemy supports also tend to play closer and more aggressive as the fight goes on since tanks will be drawing attention, meaning that you can exploit this aggressive positioning as the fight goes on. Now onto Moira's positioning and playstyle. Positioning is often a lot less strict and a lot more fluid with Moira thanks to your high sustain and fade, but the four rules of positioning that I use for every hero still apply to you. Let's take this example in King's O3rd. First rule is cover. Super important in order to not have things like your fade forced early. Second rule, line of sight. You want to see and have awareness of both teams. Third rule is distance from angles. Essentially, this means that you want to have some distance to react to flankers like a Trace or Sombra in order to put some pressure on them. And lastly, and arguably most importantly, you need rotations. This just means that you have the ability to move to different, important areas of the map, and thanks to your fade, you can. There's some aggressive options here where you can fade to your left to dual DPS, fade back to retreat, or fade aggressively for a ballsy coalescence. Just make sure that you time this aggressive DPS Moira playstyle well. Speaking of playstyles, let's touch on that. Fairy Tale, a top 500 Symmetra and Moira player, mentioned to utilize high ground if you're gonna go for the DPS playstyle, and used a clip of Midtown to show this. Apologies for Twitter compression making the gameplay a bit grainy, and I haven't got a top down view of Midtown to show why this is so important, so I'll use Hollywood First Point as an example. Essentially, high ground just means that you get another angle on the enemy team, meaning you split their attention. What is the enemy Ana supposed to do if she's getting pressured by Moira from behind or to her side, whilst her frontline are also getting pressured? Not to mention, you also cover most of the rules talked about prior. 
Now, the biggest ever Moira mains make when trying to go for the DPS playstyle is timing and context. If your tank has a good amount of self-sustain, like a Zarya, Hog or Sigma, and if you have another support with a high amount of healing, then that opens up more opportunities for you to DPS. Alternatively, if your tank or your team needs healing, then at the very least, it's probably best to top them up before you go and look for DPS jewels. You can go through Fairy Tail's Twitter and see some of his DPS Moira, and notice how every time he goes for this playstyle, it's when his team aren't missing that much HP and are either pushing in with him or they're drawing attention elsewhere. Again, DPS Moira is a valid playstyle, it just requires some nuance and execution. Now onto Moira's backline synergies. Moira Kiriko, the two supports with get out of jail free cards. Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with Kiriko and any other support at this point. This is more than enough healing and sustain, whilst also having great draw potential, as well as Kiriko making up for your lack of utility. Still though, something like a damage boost might be more valuable on longer ranged maps, and something like speed boost might be more valuable on shorter ranged maps. Moira Brig On paper, the strongest backline against dive, stupid amounts of sustain, solid raw potential, and Brig can pocket your DPS, which is something you're not great at doing. Moira Zen Moira makes up for Zen's sustain and lack of healing, and Zen makes up for Moira's lack of utility. Plus, you also get a defensive ultimate. There's legitimately a lot to like about this combo, apart from the fact that it falls apart to a single dive hero. Moira is just not great at peeling, since her spray is a projectile and is blocked by barriers. However, if the enemy team aren't running any dive heroes for some reason, you could actually get away with this greedy backline. Moira Lucio, great brawl potential, and allows Moira to play more aggressively as she doesn't need to peel as much. However, this heavily lacks any poke damage, hence you have to be running some kind of composition that wants to eventually get up close, and Kiriko is a better substitute than Moira in most scenarios. Moira Mercy, high healing and on paper, enables both the tank and DPS. However, this has close to zero utility, as well as weaker ultimates in comparison to the rest of the cast. Not a great duo, you'd be better off running any other support with Mercy, especially against Dive or on longer ranged maps. Moira Bap or Moira Ana. I've grouped these two together since they serve a similar purpose. This backline can overcompensate for healing whilst lacking some utility, hence why you typically see Ana Lucio, maybe Bap Lucio, Zen Bap, typically ran in place for Moira. However, Moira does provide that extra bit of sustain and 1v1 capability. Well that's it for the guide, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.